Remote locations uh, video. Got a couple of solutions we want to show you today that we're very excited about. We've got some uh, battery powered loggers uh, in the ground measuring groundwater. We've got some 3G GSM uh, modems for transmitting that data back to a, a computer based solution. Satellite doing very much the same in even remoter areas. And some radio telemetry options for more industrial type sites and applications. First one, we've got a ground um, borehole in the middle of nowhere. Uh, essentially, they want to measure the, uh, the water in the borehole uh, for uh, city effect of rain and uh, pumping and uh, on the underwater aquifer. So there's been a lot of projects recently to do some baseline monitoring um, before coal seam gas extraction is taking place uh, to see the effect uh, that has a, uh, in the long term on the, on the groundwater situation. Very valuable resource. Um, large percentage of our um, usable water in Australia has come from groundwater. So, um, challenges associated with that. There's no, um, you're out in the middle of the bush, there's no electrical infrastructure, so we're looking for a battery powered solution. Uh, it's located near the ocean, so there was a high amount of uh, salt in the water, which was quite aggressive to the, um, the application. What we come up with was the STS um, DLOCS. So STS, fantastic brand, uh, very reliable, um, top of the line in, uh, in quality, um, not in price. So great solution, battery powered, self-contained uh, unit. Here's a, a demo. Essentially it's got a, the battery in the, in the gut and it allows it to, to be powered and uh, store the data for retrieval later. As you can, t as you can see from the uh, the connection at the top, you actually have to plug the um, a laptop into it to get the data out of it. So, um, quite a uh, unique um, self, uh, so the pros, uh, is not relying on network stability. So if it was a uh, GSM solution, then you'd have to worry about uh, mobile coverage. Uh, you don't with this, obviously. It's portable and self-contained, so you can pull it out of one hole, stick it down another hole, and away you go. There's no monthly fee, so um, if you use a mobile network, they're going to charge you for it, uh, so, and it's the cheapest option. So, um, quite compact, great solution. Um, does le does lead to some some questions there. Yeah, you know, requires on-site retrieval, so this includes risk to the workers, so they could fall over, hurt themselves, car crashes. Um, you know, got costs associated with travel, labour, you know, time expenses. Uh, it takes a fair amount of time to get to some of these places, especially if they're very remote, and uh, delay to access the data. So you're not gonna find the data until you actually go and retrieve it. So that could be six months down the track. And of course the data's six months old by that time. So it's still a great solution if you want some training, got full training packages and everything for that, we do those in house. Um, so it's a very, very good product. But if you wanna go to something that's a little bit more um, real time and a little bit more sophisticated, we're talking GSM. So uh, the best option after that would be uh, for telemetry would be to use the mobile network. It's a pretty standard sort of question. If I can talk to my friends on my mobile phone and I can download photos and whatnot from the GSM, why can't I have a look and see what my crops are doing or see what my DM is pumping at or what level I'm at? Uh, you can essentially, and this is the this is the component you need to go in between um, your sensors essentially and your um, your yourself, your computer. It's a uh, outpost. This is how big it is. This is what it looks like. You can get it with a, a, an aerial like it has here, an external aerial and an internal aerial. Uh, this external aerial connection can go to a remote. You want to mount this inside a box, but you still want to have a good, uh, good reception. That can be done with a remote aerial. Um, uh, this, this one is, is battery powered, so it'll last uh, 10 years on a 2G network or three years on a uh, 2G network. No, sorry, five years on a 2G network. And, and certainly uh, gives you the option. Um, there's options for powering these as well if you've got a, a need for a longer, longer term uh, power supply solution. So solar panel available with exactly the same sort of connectors, M12 connectors, plug a, a four to 20 milliamp sensor. For example, you've got a tank and you want to plug a, a pressure transmitter on the bottom of it, plug that straight on there. Suddenly you have yourself a, a remote monitoring of a tank 
tank pressure, which will give you tank level straight out of the box. So these are all, all the components you need. Um, you might be thinking, yeah, it's got to be more complicated than that to set up. Well, it really isn't that, isn't that hard. Um, once you get to the, the software side, which I'll show you very soon, it, it, it's really user friendly. The next, so the other applications that we've been using these for is obviously ground ball, ground hole monitoring. Certainly, we've been using it for uh, rivers and lakes and dams and, and chases as well. So some, some great applications, great. Uh, great use for this one particular device. So you can access the data from your PC or your phone, which is great. Um, customizable graphs and data tables, so you can make a look heat and, and see how you, how you want. And you can certainly get the, the raw data out as just numbers as well, but you want to put it into an Excel spreadsheet or you want to um, transpose that some other way. You can also get it, um, the data take directly to your own website. So there's a lot of um, WA Agriculture uh, are using the data from the WASP and, and transposing it straight into their own map on their own website to, to match in with the rest of their um, inputs as well. So it's got some great alarm functions, so you can get it to send you an SMS or a, an email. It should should a, a predefined alarm state be hit. And like I said, it accepts four to twenty milliamps, which is most standard sensors, or some or a pulse input, which we get more standard from like a flow meter or a tip bucket type application, or um, an SDR twelve input. And if you don't know what that is, doesn't matter. You probably never come across it, but uh, very popular. But one of the most uh, the useful inputs for it is a temperature probe. Um, used for crops, crop monitoring, uh, make sure that the you know, frost uh, frost alert essentially. So. Um, when, when are my crops going to be exposed to a frost? Um, major advantages, well, basically the cons for the, the STS um, data logger. It saves on uh, travel expenses, time, people management costs, and, and work health and safety factors. Um, let me just click on that link and I'll show you the software. So as you see, secure network offline um, storage. So username and password as you would for most uh, loggings. And it brings you into your own uh, fleet. So obviously I have the demo uh, sitting with me at the moment. You want to show too much um, proprietary type um, data. So we'll just use the one, one demo for this explanation. But essentially, yeah, you can just go to a map view. As you'd expect, click on you know, street view or satellite so that you can see the terrain in and around where we are. Zoom in, zoom out. So this is uh, our location here in Burrisville. And if you want to move the location, very simple. You just grab all of it, click it, move it, slight, slight updated. <coughs> uh, very user friendly and very easy to, uh, to, to change. If you want to have a look at the, the info for that particular aquifer or uh, pump or, or whatever, case may be, click on it, you can see the graph, uh, you can click for more details, and it'll give you a graph from, uh, you can run reports, you can, you can customize this as, as you see fit to make it um, more applicable to your own uh, personal application. So on sites again, go to the, uh, that's the same, same page as we clicked on before. If you wanted to change the, the, the data, if you wanted to change the um, notes and location, you can take photos and, and upload them, for example, uh, of, of the site. So you can add things like uh, access requirements. You know, you need to call this number or this person before you, before you go trudging onto their properties, that type of thing. And you can turn it on and off um, from this website. Very clever, very easy to use. You can have a look at uh, any events that's been happening. And you can also set up the, the four to 20 milliamp or the whatever input that happens, that happens to be. So you know, if you want to change the four to 20 milliamp input, calibrate so we've got it set up at the moment as zero to 20 milli, uh, 20 meters in um, water meter H2O. But, you know, Lots of different options there, Celsius, bar, meters, pascals, watts, whatever, whatever you want to feed into there, you can, you can get that calibrated uh, however you'd like to see it. Don't want to spend too much time on it, but that's certainly the, the overall um, gist of the, the WASP output.
battery life. So from this graph, you'll be able to see that with 3G battery life, you can get five years out of it if you upload two days, uh, once every two days. That doesn't mean you only have to log every two days, very important distinction. So the major power um, drain on these things is transmitting to the web page, not logging as such. So logging more often doesn't really affect the life of it, but certainly the amount of times you have to upload that to the database, um, it does. So. Um, worth noting that if you use a 2G network, it doubles the lifespan. So essentially you're gonna get 10 years instead of five for every two days um, using 2G instead of 3G. But the coverage isn't as good. Um, the available with um, rechargeable battery. So if that battery life doesn't suit, you can get one that's uh, it's called Cobra, but basically exactly the same thing, except it's got a, a 12 volt input um, to power the sensor um, from a more permanent type installation including solar panels and you can have as many solar panels on batteries as you need. Budget, budget price about 1300 bucks on low volumes or around $20 a month for data. Um, it's worth noting the first 12 months, the $20 a month for data is included in the 1300. So, um, just to give you a rough price indication. And if you don't have 3G network, yeah, you still, oh, what if I can't talk on my mobile phone when I'm out of the place? Well, you're probably going to need something like a satellite telemetry option. So we've got the Skywave. Great, great units. But so this big, this does all the, um, all the hard, hard work. Um, the rest of the things in those pictures is you know, the satellite, uh, the, sorry, the solar panel and the uh, battery pack and the box and, and anything else you want associated with that. And it's just a big box with the glands in the middle uh, so you can run your STS pressure transmitter or or anything else in there that you that you'd like to monitor um, has more inputs and outputs than the, um, the outpost so it's certainly uh, more flexible it's got a, uh, you know, analog inputs uh, digital inputs uh, not, not a great many uh, on this particular unit but we could certainly expand those or you know we'll use multiple if it's a it's a bigger installation uh, great thing about satellite is you know, it works on the same thing as an eBird. So uh, if you're out in the middle of the ocean, you still want to be able to, to get a si signal if you're uh, if you're floating around the ocean. Same sort of reliability you get from the from the Skywave. Brilliant, um, brilliant bit of gear, and, uh, and pretty easy to set up. Uh, very similar web page. We're going to have a look at this web page as well. Very quickly, I'm trying not to go into too much depth because I just wanted it to be a quick video. <laughs> uh, simple sign in. And boom, that's, that's as hard as it is. So I've got the same thing, map, location, levels, water levels, uh, inputs and outputs from this is, a, is another great advantage. You can actually turn the pump on or off from your computer. Yeah, turn a pump on in the middle of the desert somewhere if it needs to be. And get feedback to say that yes, it's pumping and you can get a flow feedback to say uh, it's pumping this fast or, and say an analog input to say the tank levels are yeah, this, this far. Great little solution, more expensive of course. Shut that down. So I think this is probably around around the fifteen sixteen hundred dollar mark just for this box. Then you've got obviously got the cost of the solar panel and the, the powering this, the installation, um, and you add to that it's probably the the data transmission for this is also up around the forty to eighty dollars a month as well. Um, so you, granted, you get a lot more functionality, but it's it's the by far the most expensive option. So moving on to uh, like industrial telemetry. So there's some uh, great applications we've had where, well, we've got a pump on one side of the road and all our electrical infrastructure is on the other. How are we going to talk to it? How are we going to tell it what to do? How are we going to get the information that we need uh, from that pump to make sure that it's, it's doing its job and the levels are all okay, temperatures are okay and whatnot. Um, the L Pro series from Eaton, a, a great large range. It starts with um, the one on the left, which is essentially a if you've got a four to 20 milliamp loop and a couple of digital inputs and outputs, this bad blue will transpose those um, for you know, a couple of kilometers. 
um, with a, a unit very similar to that on the other end. So you put four to 20 up this end and up the other end, it'll give you four to 20 and it'll give you the digital outputs that you've put inputs into that. So, um, basic straight cable replacement up, right up to and including comms. So you can transmit uh, ethernet IP and, and, and several other protocols, Modbus RTU, TCP for you know, Alan Bradley and, and, and various other protocols as well. So it's, it's got a great big range, um, but you know, it's 15 kilometers line of sight, one kilometer is inside a um, industrial environment where there's you know, obstacles and whatnot. Um, Great range. They've also got GSM modems and satellite modems, um, very much for um, multi-input installations. So same thing, you'd, you'd want to put it in a box um, and it does all the transmission on all that. So it's, uh, it's a bit more of a uh, industrial project type um, gear, but all that gear is available as well. So anything you're looking for in terms of remote monitoring, we can find a solution for you. If you want some more information, please contact the team. Looking for me directly, I'm on 69... Uh, 49644022 and ask for Michael Gowan. Thank you very much.